สวัสดีค่ะ and good afternoon this is the English language summary of the press briefing by the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration or CCSA for Thursday the 24th of March 2022 before I begin let me announce very briefly our new schedule for briefings from this week onwards our previously twice weekly briefings have now been reduced to once a week so we will be seeing you every Thursday from now on. Let me then turn to recap some of the key points as we usually do from the Thai language briefing given by Dr. a p i s a m a i just now as it pertains in particular to the global situation and the domestic situation of COVID. With regards to the global situation, the meeting just now paid particular attention to the situation in the Republic of Korea, which is experiencing very high infection rates, as well as the United States of America with declining numbers there. In the region, we are paying close attention to the situation in Vietnam and Malaysia, which are experiencing very similar infection rates with Thailand. Overall, the trend and the method for Keeping statistics have now focused or turned its focus more on those who require hospitalization, as many countries around the world are aiming for or have already designated COVID-19 as endemic. In terms of the general situation in Thailand, the Department of Medical Sciences has verified that local transmission is accounting for approximately 57% or more of infections, while the verified infection rate found in incoming travelers is only about 0.67%. The remaining infections are being found in aggressive contact tracing, pre-surgery patients, and those who are not at risk cases or non-PUI or person under investigation. Therefore, one of the conclusions that is being drawn from those statistics is that Thailand's reopening plan is not. Not expected to affect or increase pandemic risk in Thailand, so we can truly now focus on transitioning from a pandemic to a post-pandemic or endemic stage of COVID-19, which we do very much hope to reach by July of 2022. Once again, according to the Ministry of Public Health, we are currently in the combating stage against Omicron, which we will remain in until early April, when we hope to reach the plateau stage with a stable rate of infections. Thus, by end of May until the end of June, we are hoping to enter a declining stage and achieve endemic status for COVID-19 by July 2022. Of course, all of this will depend on the. Continued good management of disease control measures and strong cooperation from all sectors. Next, let me touch very briefly on the new disease control zoning measures before we return to our usual updates with a slide up there for you. The general meeting last week recategorized, as many of you would know, the COVID-19 disease control zones. Currently, there are 20 provinces in the controlled area, or the orange zone, as you see there on screen. 47 provinces under close surveillance in the yellow zone, and 10 provinces categorized as tourism pilot provinces, or blue zone, namely Bangkok, Kanchanaburi, Krabi, Chonburi, Chiang Mai, Nontaburi, Batum Thani, Panga, Pechburi, Phuket, and other provinces limited to specific areas. And in the blue zone, as many of you would know, restaurants with SHA plus or Thai Stop COVID-2 plus standards can open as usual and serve alcoholic beverages on the premises until 2,300 hours. Now let's return to our usual updates that we prepare for you every time with the latest figures on entry into Thailand. And that new slide up there for you reflects during 1 to 23 March 2022, a total of 193,700 
I'm sorry, 195,703 travelers entered Thailand. Of this number, the majority, or 174,268 travelers, entered via the test and go or quarantine exemption scheme. 18,188 entered via the sandbox scheme and 3,247 international travelers entered with alternative quarantine. We have another slide coming up for you. Our usual updates for you that during this same period, the majority of international travelers are from these top 10 countries of origin, namely Singapore, Germany, the UK, the US, France, UAE, Australia, Russia, Israel, and India. Let's move now to another slide with the general situation in Thailand. And you have there in, on screen in front of you a relatively high number of new confirmed cases at 27,024 cases. Happy to report an almost equally high number of new recoveries, and that number is 23,721 cases. New fatalities, unfortunately, still reporting those at 82 cases, and again, this is relatively low in relation to the number of new confirmed COVID cases. The CCSA this morning took note that many of the latest new infections are from close contact with infected family members and friends. Many clusters also continue to be found in restaurants, factories, offices, campsites, markets, and religious ceremonies. Let's have a look now at the list of top 10 provinces with COVID-19 cases. And as you know, numbers in red indicating more COVID cases than in the previous day and the numbers in green less COVID cases than in the previous day. And we have quite a few numbers in red on screen at the moment. So you have there Bangkok, Nakhon Si Thamarat, Chonburi, Samut Pakan, and the list goes on. Let's now turn to a slide to look at progress in our vaccination drive. Yesterday, we administered 204,171 doses of the vaccine, which increases the accumulated number of vaccinations to 127,000 862, I'm sorry, 127,862,740 doses. That is quite a large number. This brings us to 79.1%, which is over 55 million people of Thailand's population having received their first dose. 72.1%, or over 50 million people, have received their second dose, and 32.6%, or over 22.6 million people people have received their third dose of the vaccine. On booster doses, the CCSA stresses the importance of the elderly getting this much needed booster shot. Statistics have indeed shown that between January and February of this year, 75% of the death toll comprised those over 60 years old. Out of that percentage, 60% did not receive any vaccination. And on the contrary, or on the flip side, if an elderly person received the full two doses, this reduces the death rate sixfold, while three doses reduces the death rate an incredible 41 fold. Therefore, if you know anyone over 60 years of age who has not yet been vaccinated, please encourage them to do so. Let's review now, once again, the new updated measures for travelers entering Thailand through the test and go sandbox and quarantine schemes, which were announced last week. And you have that slide on screen for you now. From the 1st of April 2022 onwards, travelers entering through all schemes will no longer require a pre-departure RT-PCR test within 72 hours of travel. However, there will still be the requirement for travelers to undergo that test on day one and a self-administered ATK test on day five. Another slide we have for you coming up right now is that in addition, travelers entering Thailand through the quarantine scheme will be required to quarantine now for only five days. 
The minimum coverage, once again, for COVID-19 treatment on travel insurance policy is $20,000 U.S. dollars. Thai nationals and returning expatriates are exempt from this requirement. Please note that these entry measures, these updated entry measures, are pending official announcement in the Royal Gazette, which is expected towards the end of this March, the, the end of this month, excuse me, the end of March. Again, they are effective on 1 April, the 1st of April, 2022 onwards. Let's take a look at another slide now on screen where you will see the latest list of COVID-19 vaccines approved by the Ministry of Public Health and the WHO. This may be useful for international travelers considering travel into Thailand. So to be considered as fully vaccinated, incoming travelers must be vaccinated in accordance with this list of Ministry of Public Health and WHO approved COVID-19 vaccines in the right dosage and recommended interval between their first and second dose, all of which you would have received these vaccines at least 14 days before travel. Thailand recognizes all combinations of these vaccine types with the focus being placed on the approved interval between the first and second dose. I'll leave that slide on screen for just a moment longer for our English language audiences to take note of. And now we turn to measures for Songkran. And this was a topic that was discussed extensively at the last CCSA meeting and also today's meeting. And that the Songkran Festival is approaching in less than a month and the CCSA has already agreed actually on measures and recommendations that are required to reduce the risk of infection during this festival. And you have that slide up there for you. Water splashing and traditional activities such as Rotnam are not or allowed, excuse me, to be held in line with COVID-free setting measures, while foam parties, selling and drinking alcohol in business establishments are not allowed. Those who attend Songkran Festival in closed spaces or closed space settings must wear or are very strongly encouraged to wear masks and always maintain social distancing. Water splashing is not allowed in public areas such as roads. And that is all I have for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. We will see you again next Thursday. But before then, please do take good care of yourself and your loved ones by practicing VUCA vaccination, universal prevention, COVID-free setting, and regular ATK testing. So, Adika, and have a lovely end of the week ahead of you.